What's up guys, for this video we're going all the way back to 1992 and we're going to revisit one of um, my favourite Christmas films, um, Home Alone 2. Um, I like it because there's nothing quite like the sheer joy that I get from watching two professional criminals continually be outsmarted by a 12 year old boy. Um, and whenever I think of Tim Curry this is one of the first films that comes to mind. Um, so let's get straight into it. channel and you haven't seen me do a bad film review before, I take a film, I watch it, I break it down into 10 parts and then give those 10 parts a score of 10, equaling a total out of 100, which I can then turn quite easily into a percentage. Um, those 10 parts are as follows. Script, casting, acting, directing, cinematography, editing, set design, soundtrack, uh, special and visual effects, and then its accuracy or originality as a new concept, depending on whether it's being based on something or not. Um, so yeah, let's dive straight into this. The critic scores for this, Metacritic didn't have any scores for it. Um, they just haven't scored it, I guess. Um, so I'm dealing with only three scores here today. Um, the Rotten Tomatoes critic score, the audience score, and the IMDb scores, which are in that same order. 30% for the critics, 61% for the audience, and 67% from IMDb. Um, and so my score is as follows. For scripting, I gave an 8. Uh, I felt it was fairly solid. Um, it balances very nicely um, Kevin's sort of mischief-making, the bandit's plan to rob a a toy store on Christmas Eve and this story about um, sort of friendship uh, and and um, well, I guess that's just it friendship on Christmas Eve um, which was really good um, so you got these nice sort of actiony sequences mixed in with some nice drama like most films um, but it was, it was still pretty good. Uh, the casting, I gave a 7. Uh, any excuse to watch Tim Curry, just slay it, is a good one. Um, Joe Pesci and whoever it was played Marv, I cannot for the life of me remember his name. They did excellently as the bandits. Uh, Macaulay Culkin obviously kills it as Kevin. Um, and then you've got... Um, the lady that plays the pigeon lady, who I can also not remember the name of, um, does a really good job in her role. Um, so casting gets an 8, um, and acting, sorry, a uh, 7. Casting gets a 7, sorry, and acting gets a 7 as well, for all sort of the same reasons. Um, there were some pretty, pretty popular names back in the day, and... Uh, they, they gave pretty good performances for back in the day. Um, directing also gets a 7 for similar reasons. Um, I also liked the way that Chris Columbus, who also later films, uh, directs um, the first three Harry Potter films, so Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, and Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, I liked his pacing in this film. Um, he didn't make the the dramatic sort of character building parts seem rushed to get back into the parts that make us laugh, and he didn't um, just randomly throw things together to get laughs so that he could go back to character building. He was very very sort of expertly balanced those two things. Um, cinematography uh, and editing both get sixes. Um, it was sort of fairly basic, but there are some sequences or shots that stand out in my mind. 
um, when looking at cinematography and editing. Um, and so, yeah, I give those ones a six. Um, particularly, like, shots and sequences with things falling onto the bandits sort of stick out because um, that would have taken some very expert camera work to make it look like it's coming at you but not actually have something fall on the camera and damage it at the same time so there are some pretty cool shots to me as a filmmaker um, set design gets a seven they filmed on location so they couldn't really do much with set design but the locations chosen were still pretty good um i did enjoy them. um the way that they were able to like frame things um in like central park using the bridge thing with the staircase um the only other place i know it from is in like iron fist when he fights um Davos in the same place, um, but that's a completely different thing. Um, soundtrack gets a seven, um, fairly basic, but still gets you in just the right amount of um, the Christmas spirit to still be able to enjoy the mischief that Kevin gets up to. Um, special effects, I gave a six to. Um, the only thing I can think of with special effects is the way that, like, the paint and, like, flour and oil and feathers and all the rest sort of builds up onto the, um, the bandits, um, and sort of, by the end of it, Marv's got cuts across his head from having bricks thrown at him, he's got blue paint all over his costume, he's got oil dripping down his face, feathers on his shoulders and stuff, and he just looks like a complete mess, which, having had what happened to him happen, I wouldn't have expected anything else. Um, so I did enjoy the special effects, although they weren't anything particularly spectacular. Uh, and then the originality um, is a four. This is a sequel, so they're trying to do the same thing, but different. And so the thing that they did different was instead of having him at his house, they put him in New York. Um, but then that just combines it with a Lost in the Big City story, which again, had been done. Um, so as far as originality goes, this really isn't anything special. Um, but those scores all come together to give a total of 65%, which sits right in the middle of the Rotten Tomatoes audience score and the IMDb score. Um, so... We know we're on the right track there. Um, and yeah. Um, I'm going to get ready to go out now. I've got, um, going out with some friends. So, I'm going to sign off. If you liked the video, yeah, give it a thumbs up. And I'll just let the end title card basically tell you the rest. Take it away. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you liked that, please... Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload uh, a new video. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share it with your friends as well. And if you want to see more content in between uploads, you can follow my Instagram at Ace of the Arts or my Tumblr at Stories Around a Campfire. And I will see you in the next video.